A pleasant, mild, and less stormy weather pattern sounds good, and that's what we've got as we head into this weekend and early next week, but it will not last as severe storms are going to return by the time we head towards the final days of April. Storm Prediction Center is already outlining risks, so we'll talk about the upcoming storms at the end of next week and more info on the weather straight ahead. You have made it to the weekend, and it's time to check out that weather bell trial down below if you want to get maps just like the ones we're going to use for the pattern overview momentarily. And of course, hit that subscribe button below this video if you enjoy the content. Now, let's get right into this and take a look at the future radar from the European model. As always, what I like to start out the video with area I'm circling on your screen has a chance for a lot of rainfall as we go through the day Saturday, April 20th, 2024. So while a lot of areas in the north central tier of the United States are staying dry, cool, and pretty sunny, we are going to have a pretty good deal of some rain to contend with closer to the Gulf Coast. Some of those showers producing maybe a localized flood threat even as we head towards the day Sunday over parts of Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas. Overall, the system pretty tame, just some cooler rain, a little bit of a thunderstorm chance there in South Texas that could go severe isolated flooding potential. Other than that, this storm is out of here by the time we head into early next week. We'll focus on a little bit of a great late slow pressure system as we head towards Tuesday, April 23rd. This is as we go towards the middle of the afternoon. Could we see some scattered showers and storms from parts of Iowa, Missouri, all the way on over there to southern Michigan? Yes. Will they be severe? Probably in most cases, no. Will we see a tornado threat? Probably no. So the good news is that as this cold front pushes through the Great Lakes region, all it is doing is reinforcing some cooler air that's kind of locked up in the northeastern quadrant of the United States. Otherwise, it's again, as I mentioned, it's going to push on off the coast from there as we head towards late Wednesday and into Thursday. And then we're pretty much clear, not much of a big impact out of that either. Once we begin to see the severe weather return, what I hinted at in the thumbnail, the intro to this video... And so once we go towards the Thursday, April 25th time frame, notice the European model showing some showers and storms here out over the plains with a southerly flow. Winds coming from the south to the north. Winds going from the north to the south over the Rockies, bringing some rain and still some higher elevation snowfall. That system looking like it could bring some Thursday severe weather that we'll talk about in more detail later in the video, but it certainly looks like by the time we head towards Friday, continuing storms, maybe as far north as the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin sometime late next week. So that's something we'll be tracking Point being here, it looks like multiple storm systems are going to make their way out of the Rockies late next week and into next weekend. So this going from the April 25th through at least the 28th time frame is what we're seeing right now. We'll get more details on that and discuss that a little bit more in detail later in the video. But, uh, you know, we're, all we've got is broad information even so at this point about the storm system just because of how far we are out. And, of course, it could be multiple storm systems. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. If you live in southern Minnesota, southwest Wisconsin, parts of Iowa, parts of Nebraska, and even parts of South Dakota, as I film this video on your late Friday evening, we've got a freeze warning in effect as we head into our Saturday morning, and you can certainly see why looking at our Saturday morning lows and doing our temperature tracking here for the week ahead. You can see Saturday, again, April 20th, 2024, starting the day, that's that freeze line. So if you live through Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, on over there to Wisconsin and the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, all these areas on the border of a frost and a freeze, certainly concerning there for that sensitive vegetation that you will want to cover up in those areas. Meanwhile, we've got 60s really in all these zones I'm circling down here from Virginia and the Carolinas, all the way along the Gulf Coast and Southeast Coast there towards Texas. As we warm up on our Saturday afternoon, we'll see plenty of areas get into the 80s and the circled zones on your screen from parts of the Carolinas to Texas, all the way in over there to parts of Nevada, even some 90s there in southwestern Arizona. Notice where it's going to be cooler though. As we've got the spring chill and, you know, pretty mild air for this time of the year in place over parts of the Midwest of the Great Lakes and northeastern parts of the United States, especially interior zones where we're going to be only in the mid to upper 40s for daytime highs on our Saturday. Waking up Sunday morning, the frost and freeze line is further south, so through central Kansas, central Missouri. We'll probably have some new frost and freeze alerts here along parts of the Ohio River, stretching all the way on over there into places like Boston, Massachusetts, the main coastline getting close to that freezing mark, even deeper into the 20s further northwest there into Montana, Colorado, the Dakotas, and Wyoming as well, by the way, getting in on that. As you can see into parts of Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, that's where it's going to be the warmest to start the day on Sunday. Not warming up much, though, with that cold rain that I was talking about earlier in the video getting going there. A lot of the central United States warming up decently into the upper 50s and low 60s. So again, very mild, but still anomalously cool weather for this time of the year for a lot of the U.S. See those circles there into parts of Mississippi. That's where record-breaking cool high temperatures could be in place 
as we head towards our Sunday, April 21st during the day. So certainly some chilly air for this time of the year, at least. Not necessarily chilly in a general sense, just cooler than average for this time of the year. That continues into Monday morning with 20s and 30s to start the day over a lot of the Midwest, especially into the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and into parts of the Northeast. So again, you'll want to cover that sensitive vegetation if you are in that growing season time period in these zones. Keeping it cooler for highs with lots of 60s in some of the zones that could be in the 70s here in the southeast and mid-Atlantic Monday afternoon as a little trough continues there. Meanwhile, we're still in the 70s and 80s and beginning to rebound over parts of the plains for highs as we go through Monday, April 22nd. Tuesday, April 23rd, remember that's when we've got a chance for some scattered showers and storms late in the day over parts of the Midwest. That's why you've got a little bit of a warmer air mass pushing from parts of Texas and Oklahoma on up to Illinois with some 50s to start the day. We're going to begin to really see our temperature rebound for a lot of zones continue and it really develop as we head to Tuesday and onward. Other than zones up here in the parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, where in the northern parts of those states we'll see 40s for highs on Tuesday and in, in Maine. It's pretty much warm. You can see from parts of Oregon, Idaho, all the way on over toward the southeastern United States going into the afternoon on our Tuesday, and we'll see on Wednesday as well that we're going to warm on up into the 60s and the 70s. Here we go Wednesday morning. Plenty of 50s and 60s to go around over the southern tier. Still hanging on to some of those 20s and 30s. Remember, we've got that cold front I was talking about that's going to make its way off the northeast coast of the United States. Tuesday, April 23rd, going into Wednesday, April 24th. Certainly going to make for some more frost and freeze conditions there over the Great Lakes. A cool day on Wednesday, but overall, if you're south of this line that I'm drawing on your screen, it is going to be a pretty warm time as we head towards Wednesday, and the overall warming trend that's going to lead up to that severe weather event I was discussing, that is going to continue and even continue deeper into our week next week, Thursday, April 25th, starting the day. Still near freezing here over the Great Lakes and Northeast, but much closer to the 60s there over parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. And look at how the temperatures warm up in the high plains and the front range Thursday afternoon. Looks like a ripe scenario for severe weather, if not Thursday, then Friday in those zones. And a lot of the southeastern United States getting well into the 70s and 80s. Now let's talk in depth now about the severe weather potential as we head towards late next week. First of all, some of these kind of lighter yellow shades, and then once you get into the greens, that's where you're talking about low pressure systems. I'm more circling this low on up here towards the Great Lakes and extending into southeastern Canada Tuesday, just to show you that cold front moving through and to show you overall what low pressure looks like on these maps. Red does not mean hot. It just means high pressure, meaning that there's overall going to be less precipitation over a lot of the central and eastern United States Tuesday and into Wednesday, as indicated by that high pressure that's going to move from the central plains heading towards the Great Lakes during the period. And that even continues into our Thursday. But once you get towards the end of our Thursday, you can certainly see those greens fading on out there of parts of Colorado starting to shade there into parts of the central plains and that's where we're going to have that low pressure developing a 990 to 1000 millibar low pressure system is a pretty classic plains low pressure system looks like it's going to be extended from parts of minnesota and wisconsin all the way back down there to southwest texas as these ensembles or collection of models they're showing here and that is something that we're certainly going to be keeping our eyes on late next week. And again, on the GEFS Ensembles, this is a collection of models blended together to give us an output. And you can see the greens. What we're looking for is deeper greens on your screen to indicate where we could see some heavier rainfall, not only severe weather, but also some flooding looking like the central and southern plains into the Mississippi River Valley. Thursday, going into Friday next week into parts of the Midwest. That could be round number one. The European model doesn't really show that first round getting going until at least Friday. But then notice these GEFS ensembles. Again, a big collection of models here, indicating we're going to see multiple rounds of new severe weather fire on up over parts of the plains into the Midwest. I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over. I might sound like a broken record right now. I'm just trying to drive home the point that it's looking very active here over the Central Plains, really beginning April 25th, going all the way towards Monday, April 29th here. You can even see some of the greens fading out. Yep, there you go. Missouri, Illinois, parts of Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee. This collection of models, probably not going to be 100% accurate this far out, certainly giving you an idea that it's going to be very active in the Central and maybe even towards the Eastern United States as we head towards that period. Now, an increased severe weather risk, a 15% chance of storms that could be severe within 25 miles of a point that's already issued by the storm prediction center seven days out here for thursday april 26 2024 if you live from wichita falls texas to lawton oklahoma 
on up there towards Woodward and Enid there in Oklahoma to areas west of Wichita and towards Hayes in Kansas. These are the zones Storm Prediction Center is already highlighting for the potential of all modes of severe weather more than likely as we head towards the back half of next week. Looking at my precip anomaly charts here, I'm thinking it's going to be at least a little bit to even moderately above average in terms of precipitation from Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and then on up there into Missouri, Kansas, and parts of southern Nebraska as we head towards the April 25th through 29th time frame. Again, that falls right in line with that increased chance for severe weather. Also note, looking drier than average along the east and west coast by a little bit and cooler than average on the east and west coast by a little bit as well. Meanwhile, you can see parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana, same areas where we're probably going to be getting low pressure systems, the southerly flow bringing that warmth and moisture up from the Gulf of Mexico. That's where I'm expecting it to be above average in the temperature department during that period. So if you want to track severe weather with me as we get closer to this event, track the long range forecast all the time, hit that subscribe button, help me get towards that 4,000 subscriber goal here on YouTube. And that's it for this video. Subscribe to my extra page as well. There's a link in the pinned comment to that where I will probably begin posting some extra brief severe weather forecasts at times there. As I was just saying, that's it for this video. Hope everybody has a great weekend. One Nation Weather.